the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that's happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This week, we're going to be talking to an old friend of the show, uh, someone you may have met earlier this, uh, this summer, actually, during one of our town halls about something really exciting, the world of cloud computing. If you ever want to get involved on the show or any of our shows, please email us. It's feedback at ami.ca. You can also connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. And don't forget to follow and review our podcast. Just search up Double Tap Canada in your podcast app of your choice. I am Mark Aflalo, and by my side each and every single week is Stephen Scott in Glasgow, Scotland. Stephen, how would you describe the term cloud computing in layman terms, layman terms? Oh, right. You come to me for the simple explanation, right? Okay. Um, well, the way I describe it, I guess, is when you think about the cloud, think about a computer in the sky. That's probably the simplest way to think about it. And you connect to it wirelessly. You connect to it over the air, the air between the cloud and you. Um, that's probably the simplest way to, to think about it, right, is that it's essentially a cloud service, a uh, computer service in the sky. And there are lots of existing examples of those already. Okay. I mean, I give the example of cloud storage, for example, Dropbox, uh, OneDrive, whatnot, but pretty much any machine that's available over the internet could be considered a cloud-connected computer. Now, not to be mistaken, with the latest announcement from Microsoft called Windows 365, and this one really excites me, Stephen. Yeah, do you know, it excites me as well, and it came out of the blue. I mean, this is not something that I was aware of even happening. I did know that Microsoft talked about Windows as being a service going forward. And I must admit, I didn't know entirely what that meant. Now, I must admit, this the closest I guess I've come to this kind of experience so far is with the Chromebook. Um, but that's not the same thing. That's not really what the Chromebook is. Uh, it is a very light operating system, uh, which is based on the browser. It seems that the way that Windows 365 is being advertised is the exact opposite. It is that device living in the sky, uh, and you connect to it remotely. Um, it, it's a very exciting prospect of being able to connect to something with a very low power machine to something very high power. Yeah, what gets me, you know, you know, when I try to compare this for people, I explain to them that a Chromebook, for example, it's a low powered machine, not a lot of storage on the device because it expects you to use their own suite of cloud office, you know, services and stuff. So you're gonna open a browser, you're gonna go to docs, you're gonna go to sheets, you're gonna do your work there and hit save and leave. What Windows 365 is, is a full-fledged Windows PC available to you regardless of the platform that you're on that is based in the cloud. So you still give it a certain amount of processors, like two CPUs. You can still give it four, eight, 16, 32 gigs of RAM. You still get a hard drive. You can still install all your own apps. But until recently, in order to get something like this, you still need a PC hardware. So if you wanted to casually use Windows, you'd need a separate machine. And of course, there's things like parallels and virtualization and other ways to do it. But this option is really geared for businesses who want to get people up and running, uh, I guess, quickly, because they can really turn on one of these desktops and say, OK, here's your login, here's your password, open a browser, and suddenly you have a full-fledged working desktop, right? Yeah, absolutely. And think of the cost here as well. Think of the the impact this will have on cost to businesses. No longer do you have to send out a company laptop. No longer do I have to carry around two devices with me because they've issued me the company machine. I can just go to any web browser on my MacBook, on my iPad, yes, even the iPad, uh, or on a low-power Windows PC or on a Chromebook and just log in to my Windows session and continue working as I would if I were in front of that machine. Uh, it's, it's really exciting, and I think, so, so cost is a big impact here. There's gonna be a huge benefit there. Uh, and I think this will eventually apply to home users as well. We are talking only for business at the moment, but just think about home users who therefore don't need to buy a big expensive machine. They can essentially subscribe to an expensive machine, um, which some might say is a bit unnerving, but we do live in a world of subscriptions now. We're used to paying per month for everything. And a lot of people don't have the money to shell out on a big fancy machine, especially if you want to do video editing or gaming or any of those things. 
you, maybe you can now do it all in the cloud. Think of it from the IT perspective. Number one, just creating a new desktop and giving it to somebody within a couple minutes. Number two, controlling the resources, the antivirus, the access, and everything all done from the cloud. If you need a new, uh, more storage or more RAM, you can immediately do it and have it added on to that, that virtual computer in the cloud. Uh, and you know, we've got a lot of questions about it. You know, we want to find out, can we run Adobe Premiere? Can we do video editing, audio editing? Did they learn a lot of lessons from their Xbox cloud experience, which has extremely low latency and lets you play games in real time? And did they bring that to Windows? So lots of questions and, and lots of lots of stuff we want to find the answers to. And we're going to welcome someone on the show in just a couple of minutes. Jason Bromit is the head of modern work and security over at Microsoft Canada. He joined us earlier this summer in one of our town halls, but we're bringing him back because when they announced Windows 365, I needed to get the Microsoft perspective. I needed to find out what was the thinking? How long has this been in the works? Why didn't we see this at the beginning of the pandemic? What can we do? What can't we do? Lots of questions and Jason Bromit is on deck and waiting for us. So if you've got a question after this week's episode, let us know. The email address is feedback at ami.ca. If you want to reach out on social media, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, it's at Double Tap Canada. Use the hashtag Ask Double Tap so we can find it a lot quicker. And of, of course, don't forget the podcast because you can hear clips of Jason on our podcast edition of Double Tap Canada. Stick around. He is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. We're going to come back with Jason Bromit from Microsoft in just a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you so much for being here with us this week. You're going to have a lot of questions after this week's episode, as I alluded to. I have a lot of questions. I don't think we're going to get to all of them. So don't forget to email us, feedback at ami.ca, and reach out on our social media, Twitter, Facebook, at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott by my side, and we're very excited to get talking all about Windows 365 with the head of modern work and security at Microsoft Canada, Jason Bromit. Thank you so much for being with us again and breaking this down, at least the announcement. Now, before we dive in, Jason, I, I want you to summarize what Windows 365 is and what the announcement was all about. Yeah, absolutely. And great to be here again. Always a pleasure to see the team. Um, so really exciting announcements, uh, as you mentioned, that we made earlier this week for Windows 365, which we really do view as what I'll call the world's first cloud PC. Uh, and it, it's often referred to as, I'll say, Windows in the cloud. Uh, the way to think about it, which is uh, Windows 365 is really set up to, I'll say, securely stream your personalized Windows desktop apps, settings, and content from the cloud to any device. Uh, and, and I'll give you two perspectives, which is in uh, given the pandemic and what we've had to live through over the last 15 months, uh, we know so many companies, small and large, literally had to send their people home overnight. And in many cases, those organizations weren't set up to do so. Um, we actually shared as part of the launch announcement earlier this week, uh, this, the work we've been doing with the government in Nunavut here in Canada uh, as part of our preview. And if you think about just the, dis the distribution of the geography that Nunavut has, uh, the idea of being able to ship a PC to an employee of the government uh, is a three or four week exercise just by virtue of uh, logistics. In many cases, they don't have roads. And so accessibility is about flights. And so think about an individual sitting in a remote location, actually being able to boot an existing piece of hardware and having their uh, organization just stream windows directly to them. And so we think this is an amazing opportunity, certainly I'll say in key scenarios like hybrid work, disaster recovery, but we think frankly, it's for the smallest to small businesses with an employee of one, uh, all the way through large enterprises who are really trying to rethink what I'll call their hybrid strategy and, and really delivering uh, great experiences to their employees, no matter where they are. Jason, in our conversations that we've had in the past, we talked about bandwidth and speed and latency. How well will these cloud instances of Windows run, for example, over a cellular based LTE connection or places that have crappier internet connections? So absolutely. Um, and, and again, without question, I'll say um, speed is going to be a function of the connectivity that you have. Um, but again, look at the Nunavut uh, story uh, where most of their connectivity is satellite based uh, and they've had an exceptional experience through the preview. So this changes how Windows will work forever, right? Windows going forward is going to become a service now. 
we've talked about this before, which is uh, computing and technology and the experiences each of us as individuals, organizations expect have changed. Uh, we, without question, think that I'll call it the traditional client PC uh, is known and loved. It's what most people are familiar with and still serves a very important purpose. Uh, virtualization, I'll say, is a second sort of dimension of computing solutions, again, plays a very important role. Uh, but it also comes with some complexities, and we recognize that a lot of organizations don't have the skills um, to manage those virtualized environments. Uh, then you have desktop as a service, which has certainly emerged, uh, I'll say, more recently. Um, but we really think about this as a great opportunity to create what I'll call a simplified experience for organizations and individuals to be able to access the apps that they love, uh, no matter where they're working, especially in a world where we are going to be hybrid for some time uh, for the foreseeable future. I have to ask this question, Jason. It's on all of our viewers' minds. Will Windows 365 be accessible? Accessibility by design is just a fundamental principle. Um, and when you think about uh, Windows 365, obviously, uh, out of the gate, when it becomes available August 2nd, uh, we'll uh, include Windows 10. Uh, as we release Windows 11, uh, it will also become accessible for organizations through Windows 365. We've made some incredible advancements and investments in Windows 11 around accessibility. Uh, and so I would expect absolutely. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet myself, but uh, we do not deviate from our principles of accessibility by design. Jason, I really have to go back to this because a lot of people ask me this question when I talk about it, and, and that is the latency and the lag. You know, I think I could probably answer the question, uh, but given all the experience that Microsoft has had, especially over the past year when it comes to the xCloud gaming service, but will there be a significant lag? Am I going to click that mouse and have to wait 10 seconds? Listen, when we look at sort of the collective cloud services um, that we offer and we provision and we provide to consumers all the way through to businesses, uh, we learn across the organizations. And so a lot of the work that we've done on some of what I'll call our consumer-centric ser cloud services, uh, Xbox obviously being a big piece of it in gaming, uh, without question, a lot of that IP and intelligence and experience has gone into the design for Windows 365 and, and uh, that cross-section and, uh, and cross-pollination of our engineering teams is super important. Okay, a practical question about things like printers, for example, or connected peripherals. Since this is a cloud-based computer, am I still going to be able to print locally, plug in a USB key if I wanted to, or connect devices like webcams or audio interfaces, that kind of thing? Listen, at the end of the day, we want to ship a great experience, uh, irrespective of, uh, I'll say, the work that you may be doing. Uh, and so I would expect, uh, obviously, again, very new announcements, but you, I would expect the full fidelity of experiences um, in the scenarios that you kind of talked about uh, as we make this available. You see, Stephen, I'm all excited about this one, and I think for pretty good reason. Jason Bromit, stick around. Uh, we need to take a quick break, but I've got so much more for you. I think we're going to go a little bit more rapid fire after we take that break. This is Double Tap TV with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. We're back with more from Jason Bromit at Microsoft after this break. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. This is Double Tap TV. Hi, I'm Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott, and we continue our conversation with our special guest this week, the head of modern work and security at Microsoft, Jason Bromit. Jason, let's talk hardware for a second here, or at least virtual hardware, okay? These are physical machines, I'm guessing, despite them being available in the cloud, right? So does that mean that they can be scaled up, like if we wanted to add more RAM or add more hard drive space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, Windows 365, when it's available uh, early part of August, will come in two versions, uh, Windows 365 Business and Windows 365 Enterprise. Uh, and then we will obviously enable customers to scale up um, based on what are the scenarios that they're looking to solve for, uh, what are the computing capabilities that they need. And so, uh, again, really about building that flexibility in, uh, being able to work across a range of devices and operating systems, as we've talked about, which is really bringing Windows, whether you're using a Windows traditional device, uh, OS, uh, with, uh, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux in the future, uh, we want to be able to serve users no matter where they are, uh, and more importantly, no matter what they're trying to do in this new world of hybrid work. One question I'm getting a lot is around third-party apps, Jason. Now, personally here, I'm thinking about, and I know my listeners are thinking about screen reading software, but there are lots of business needs when it comes to third-party apps. 
Will Windows 365 support those? Yeah, totally. Uh, and we, uh, I'll say consistent with uh, Windows 11, which we obviously announced a little while ago, back with uh, the announcements of Windows 10, we also stand behind our app commitment uh, and with AppAssure as a program that's available for customers so that if they do run into app problems, we stand beside uh, you and making sure that we can support it. And so uh, bring, bring all your apps, I guess, is maybe the short answer. Jason, I know your time is limited and I have a lot more questions and we got a lot of questions from, from some of our viewers. So so let's do some rapid fire, shall we? This should get a lot of it out of the way. So let's start with this. What about IT support in business? With IT managers, will they still be able to create the master image and distribute that in the cloud too? Absolutely. So we'll give IT all of the, um, the predictability, I'll call it, in terms of cost uh, and the scalability and reliability and resiliency that we just talked about, obviously security. Um, but that simplicity, I'll call it around um, both purchasing, deploying, and managing. Uh, and so uh, through whether it's through Endpoint Manager uh, and the admin console, we'll be able to create those profiles uh, for users based on uh, whatever, again, uh, type, type of worker, where they may be based, uh, the apps that they need access to. Uh, and so you'll be able to create those profiles for sure. Okay, what about consumers? We know Windows 365 is launching for business. Um, but when it comes to consumers, are we going to be able to take advantage of stuff at home? Um, so we've only talked on the business front. I'll say the question remains, which is, hey, is this, what does this look like for a consumer? I think we'll, we'll learn very quickly as we make the business uh, capabilities available. Now, we'll still need a device to get to the Windows 365 experience on our browser, albeit perhaps not as powerful a machine as, as we may have needed in the past. But am I getting from you and what you're saying that the consumer experience of Windows 365 isn't really the top priority at the moment? A lot of the engineering work that we've been focused on with Windows 365 is about empowering businesses uh, and recognizing that hybrid work uh, diversity of workplaces, elasticity of or, uh, workforces uh, are important and challenging scenarios that our customers are continuing to wrestle with around the globe. Uh, and recognizing, again, uh, here in Canada, we're starting to see, I'll say, the outside of this, um, but we also are still seeing markets around the world that are very much dealing with uh, complexities related to the pandemic. And so uh, really the focus is on business solutions. Um, I, again, we d deeply believe that I'll call it the traditional client PC experience yeah. uh, that is known and loved will continue to exist um, yeah. for the future uh, without question. Uh, and part of that is uh, anchored in our in announcements a few weeks back on Windows 11. I look back at the past year, Jason, and you talk about the pandemic. This service would have been a great, great utility about a year ago when the pandemic first hit and people were going home. So that begs the question, was this service a child of the pandemic? Did it come from a need like that? Or is it something that's been in the works for many, many years before that that just happened to come out at the right time? So without question, we have moved very quickly as a company. Um, uh, Satya made sort of the term of, I think, two years of digital transformation in two months. Uh, that's not just for businesses in the markets around the world. That's as much as applicable to us as an organization. And so when you look at some of the innovations and enhancements that we've shipped inside teams, a lot of that has been fueled by research insights and learnings through the pandemic. And so we've accelerated our innovation uh, and engineering work there. Without question, you see that same speed and agility uh, and innovation coming through in Windows 365. Um, despite the fact that, yes, when we think about Windows Virtual Desktop, of which I'll say Windows 365 runs on top of, uh, it's something we've had available in the market for, not, uh, I'll say, I can't even remember the number of years now, um, but quite some time. Uh, and so this is just the next evolution of that. Uh, again, recognizing that we have a diverse set of uh, scenarios and experiences our customers are trying to get to. Jason Bromit, a pleasure to have you on this week's episode of Double Tap TV. Thank you for coming back. Time and time again, keep the hits coming, as they say. And we cannot wait to dive in deeper and bring our audience more of our experience with Windows 365. Stephen, your overall thoughts, do you think you could find a place in your life for this kind of service? I think I could. I mean, I love the idea of a cloud-based computer. I do wonder, though, what this means overall for PC sales. I mentioned earlier about the, the impact on business, not having to buy as many uh, machines. But when it gets to a consumer level, what does that mean for PCs? Will people not upgrade as much? Are people going to be digging out their old Dell laptops, <laughs> trying to build them back up again to uh, to access a, a Microsoft Edge browser so they can use a really powerful machine? How is it all going to look? Um, I think it, this will change the, the PC market 
Uh, and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing might be great for Microsoft, but what will it be like for those companies that rely on those PC sales, which have gone up during the pandemic? So we'll uh, wait and see what happens. You know, I guess some of those hardware manufacturers can also start worrying about designing things that are a little bit more flexible, you know, give people the choice to run these things from the cloud a little bit better, maybe embed things like 5G and better wireless connectivity, maybe get that, you know, touch interface a bit more ironed out. I think we'll see a, an interesting shift, especially in the business place, but people will still need some kind of physical device. Maybe now they just get to have a little bit more choice when they walk into a new job and say, well, I'm more of a Mac guy. I want to use a Mac or I just want to use an iPad and, and they'll have that option. So I'm curious to see how that all plays out and we'll see how it plays well, out. Well, I was going to say but that. We're I mean, also this, going is, to dive deeper. this is going to be great for the, the Apple market because they can sell lots of MacBooks and say, hey, you get Windows as well, uh, which of course Apple have been known to do in the past. Um, and of course for Chromebooks as well, it gives them something to do. And this answers that question, Stephen, about, you know, when are we going to be able to use Windows on a new M1 enabled Mac? Well, the answer is right now. Well, you can use it. it in a browser. You can use it as a remote desktop. You'll be able to use it in so many different ways. So I'm looking forward to playing a lot more about Windows with Windows 365. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? So we've often wondered how will Windows come to the Mac under M1? Well, now we have that answer. I don't think we're thinking now about virtualization. I think we're thinking about cloud-based solutions uh, as a result of this announcement. So the idea of getting Windows onto your computer is kind of is kind of going away, or, or actually physically putting it on a machine, which of course takes up storage, takes up resources, and all of that. Uh, and of course, the starting block for this was really kicked off when Microsoft announced remote desktop connection for Mac uh, for the M1 chip, which means I can now connect to my PC remotely through my MacBook, which actually works really well. You know, I will say, Mark, that's the thing about PCs, you know, and, or Windows, I should say. You know, if you really want the best Windows experience, buy a Mac. <laughs> uh, the Sean Priest saying, I'm telling you. <laughs> Stephen, as always, a pleasure of having you on this week, uh, as you are each and every single week. I don't think there would be really a show without you. And uh, it's big special thanks to Jason Bromit over at Microsoft for joining us once again on the show. We cannot wait to bring all this stuff to you. And of course, if you have any questions, please email us, feedback at ami.ca. Please reach out on Twitter or Facebook. It is at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. We will see you again next week here on Double Tap TV. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing Jordan Steves and Mark Aflalo. Integrated Described Video Specialist Ron Rickford. Coordinating Producer Jennifer Johnson. Director Production Kara Nye. Director Programming Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2021 Accessible Media Inc.